Resets happen when a player on the ground is hit by a move that forces them to stand up. Rather than the term jab reset, I will use the terms tap reset, option tap reset, and optionless tap reset. A tap reset has two requirements and three possible outcomes. Requirement one is they have to be on the ground such as after a missed tech. Requirement two is that the move resetting deals less than 7% damage. After a move dealing less than 7% damage connects, the character goes into a special stun animation that is 13 frames long. SDI and the move's knockback determine where the character will move during this time. The first tap reset outcome happens if they are in the air after the end of this 13 frame animation. If they are, they instantly go into the fall animation where they are free to act at will. This allows them to double jump, land normally, or even air dodge away. The second and third possible outcomes happen if they are not in the air after those 13 frames. At this point, if the move caused 13 or less frames of hit stun, such as a low percent jab or something like a falco laser, an optionless tap reset occurs, where the opponent is forced to stand up. If it caused more than 13 frames of hit stun, such as a higher percent jab reset, the final outcome, an option tap reset, occurs. An option tap reset forces either a stand up, roll behind, in front, or a get up attack. If your opponent holds a direction to either side on the control stick, they will roll. If they press an attack button the exact frame after those 13 frames end, they will do a get up attack. If they don't hold a direction and don't press an attack button on that frame, they will stand up as normal with an optionless tap reset. In my personal opinion, the best way to defend against a jab reset is Press up exactly when you think the jab reset will hit, and instantly roll your control stick to diagonally up, hold your control stick there, and roughly 13 frames later, jump or air dodge. This way you get an attempt at a double frame perfect input to get 2.5 SDI, and you get an option select timing chance of 1.5 SDI. If this is enough to keep you in the air after 13 frames, you get a jump or an air dodge, and if you don't end in the air, you will roll when reset, provided there's enough hit stun to allow for that. Not every reset works like jabs. For example, Fox's down air resets from 0 to 999%, and you will never be able to SDI it up enough to end in the air. However, it will always have more than 13 frames of hit stun, meaning you can buffer a roll after the reset by holding the control stick left or right. There are so many different reset situations that I'm not going to cover them all. I will, however, briefly cover Thunder's combo and Puff's jab reset. For Thunder's combo, if you're getting hit by it, you could be jabbed at different heights. This will change how much SDI you need in order to end in the air after the jab, which ruins a Thunder's combo. A lot of the time, 1.5 SDI, or even just a single ASDI, is enough to escape Thunder's. Even when you're at 0%, 2.5 SDI will allow you to escape even a TAS Thunder's combo. For Puff's jab reset, depending on how perfect their reset is, you can sometimes SDI up, but a perfect Puff reset will not allow you to escape with 2.5 SDI until around 75%. Puff's jab reset is also extremely low on hit stun, so you cannot buffer a roll out of its reset until extremely high percents, like 90 or so. Is 666XX real? No. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd rather see a video on ledge teching or wall shine infinites. I hope this helped clear up some confusion about jab resets, but if you still have questions, let me know. I try to respond to every comment on my videos.